Good morning and welcome to Hollow Acres Homestead. My name is Stephanie and today we are doing some pest control. So it kind of figures that as soon as I get out here to start doing pest control and I bring my camera, my neighbor's weed eating their grass. I'm gonna try to get through this quickly. I'm not gonna ask him to stop, that would be rude. So what I'm doing is using diatomaceous earth. I picked this up from Lowe's. I ordered diatomaceous earth, food grade, um, two and a half weeks ago almost, and the order was canceled. So some shipping issue, I don't really know, I didn't look too much into, it's not a big deal. I picked this up at Lowe's for $10. So diatomaceous earth, what is diatomaceous earth? Diatomaceous earth is made up of diatoms, seashells, and sedimentary rocks. Diatomaceous earth will kill anything with an exoskeleton, beetles, ants, wasps, even ladybugs, unfortunately. Um, this one says that it kills German cockroaches, ants, beetles, and other crawling insects listed. Let's see. I'll just really quickly read the instructions. It says, use outdoors, on plants, and on the soil, around plants, against German cockroaches, ants, except carpenter harvester and pharaoh ants, beetles, except wood destroying beetles, adelagids, I don't really know what that is, aphids, assassin bugs, black widow spiders, box elder bugs, caterpillars, centipedes, chinch bugs, cicadas, cutworms, earwigs, fall armyworms, fleas, fire ants, leaf footed bugs, leaf miners, leaf hoppers, leaf rollers, leaf skeletonizers, I'll show you that in a second, mealybugs, moths, phyloroxia, psyllids, PSY, psyllids, psyllids, yeah, scales, sharpshooters, slugs, spittle bugs, stink bugs, tree hoppers, and white flies, so that is a lot of bugs. Kills stuff that has an exoskeleton. So diatomaceous earth is a soft powder to us. If you were to put some diatomaceous earth underneath the mi microscope, you will end up seeing crystallization that is in it. And that crystallization got really sharp ridges. And though it does not affect us as humans, for um, bugs that have the exoskeleton, it gets up underneath it and it irritates the bug, forcing it to shed its exoskeleton forcing it to shed the exoskeleton, which will leave that bug pretty much defenseless. I have an old sock. I'm gonna take this old sock, put the diatomaceous earth on it, and I'm going to powder the leaves. So here's the amaranth. This is pretty much what I'm starting with. I need to come out with scissors, and I'm going to clip off a lot of these leaves. See, but these skeletonized leaves, these are from those pigwig, the pigwig beetles, I think I'm saying that right, I might not be, but there's also some caterpillars on here. So I will show you how I'm going to do this on the amaranth. Then I will be moving on to the melons and pretty much every other plant. But I feel like a demonstration, you know, just to show you what I'm doing and how you can do this too with an old sock. So here is diatomaceous earth. It is a very fine powder. It's very powdery, very soft. Now I am going to open up my sock. I am filling up my sock in the bag because I'm messy. Alrighty. Getting bit. All right. So here's my sock, and as I pat it, you can see the powder comes out. So I'm going to take the leaves and powder the leaves. Now I like the sock method because it comes out very slowly. This did not come with one of those squeeze things. I could get one, but um, you know, this works just fine, you know. Gotta get under the leaves, on top of the leaves. Probably could have picked a thinner sock though, this is a little thick.
So I got pretty far in the garden, left the camera, forgot about the camera. I got all the way down to almost the in-ground garden space. Filling up my sock again. So it does not take much of this stuff. It does say on here though that you should wear a mask and I've been holding my breath and breathing away because I did not bring a mask. So these over here are spaghetti squash. And I hope that you can see that down here, this yellowing of this plant, and it has been eaten apart. Now what this is are squash borers. Now I am not sure if Diatomaceous Earth is gonna work on that for the squash borers on account of they don't really have an exoskeleton, I don't think. So this works well for plants, but when I'm trying to get to the vine, ah! So I don't know how well that's gonna work, but we're giving it a shot. So pretty much all of the squash plants that I have have been attacked by the squash borers. And I do not think that they are gonna make it. All right, so for the most part, I pretty much got everything. Everything on the left side of the garden has been eaten by bugs. I will be coming out and trimming it all down. A lot of these skeletonized leaves I'll be coming and trimming down. So I am pretty much at like infestation levels as far as it goes with the bugs. You've seen the amaranth, the complete skeletonized leaves. I would seriously recommend not waiting until you have an infestation to uh, deal with your pest problem. So I have been using neem oil for pest control in the garden. I ordered BT, it never came. I also ordered the diatomaceous earth like I said earlier and it didn't come so I went and bought it. I went out and bought some. But I really should have been on top of these pests way sooner and I wouldn't be having the squash borer problem that I'm having or the skeletonized leaves from the pigweed be beetles. I really think they're pigweed beetles. I have to look it up. I'll put it on the screen along with a picture. That's what I'm having problems with. So, so far this morning, the garden has been watered. I have put diatomaceous earth on everything. That needs it, not everything, everything that needs it. So anything where I'm seeing beetles or caterpillars, which I don't, I really don't even think this stuff is gonna work with the caterpillars, but it says it does on the bag, but the research that I've done says that it does not. So we'll just see what happens. So I will come back in two or three days, let you kind of know how the diatomaceous earth is affecting all the plants that I put it on. I will see if I have less beetles. If I am still noticing a problem with the caterpillars and all the cabbage worms, the cabbage moths, the white butterflies that are so pretty, well, they're bad. They're bad butterflies and they cause damage and so do their larvae. So, diatomaceous earth is what I'm using today for pest control. I don't know if I'm gonna use neem oil, I'll figure it out later. You do not wanna put this stuff on right as the sun is hitting the plants. The sun's starting to hit the plants. It's powder, it, they're not wet, so it should be fine. The leaves should not burn. We should be good to go. While we are on pest control, I just wanna show you a little something and I will be coming back out here later to fix it. When I went to Lowe's, I picked up some, um, it's like a shoe away for rodents, deers, rabbits, foxes, stuff like that. I just want to show you what happened last night. And it's ironic because I fixed my fence yesterday. Oh, I think it's so bright that it's not going to focus. All right, come on, readjust. Here we go. There it is. Alrighty. What's missing? What do you think? All my beans, perhaps? All the okra, maybe? Stinking figures, huh? So, they ate all the beans, the ones that I wanted to save the seeds for. The zucchinis, that one died. A couple of them aren't doing so good. Some of them are doing all right, I guess. 
there is one squash down in there. I'm letting that go to seed. If that's going to be my last squash plant that is growing on these plants, so be it. Look at that. So, my choices now are to leave these, let them grow back, or pull it all and plant some new ones. I'll probably end up doing that. Whoa! Alright, so here's where the deer got in. Busted that whole gate down. You know, I don't have a camera out here, so I don't know how many deer, but I do know that it happened last night because I fixed the fence yesterday. Not this part, this was up. I know for a fact this was up. So they ate all that stuff, came over here, topped off all of my apple trees, but they didn't leave, the, they didn't mess with the citrus, so whatever, that's good. All of my seedlings topped off. All of these seedlings pretty much topped off. They left alone the boxwood. Thank goodness, I need to pot that up. They ate six apple trees, apple trees. And then what is over here? Oh, neglected honeycomb. These are the only ones of these that I had. Oh man, I hope they come back. This is great mullion. I like that stuff. It's very soft. Yay, pepperoncinis. Yay, not a pino peppers. The Aji Trapanara pepper has still not done anything yet. Hey, but, you know. So the deer didn't take everything, so that's a plus. <sighs> Boy, do I got some work to do out here. Look. Look at the gloriousness of all of this. Look, 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 look. You see that one right there? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There. Right there. Cosmos. Here are the peas. Let's let me see. I'm letting them... I pretty much let them go. I really did. See, some of them are okay, but the heat got to them. I'm going to come through and pick out the ones that have dried. And, of course, now I can't seem to find any. Here's one. So when your peas dry on the... Let me put the sock down. When your peas dry on the vine, you know, that's a dried pea. You pop it open, and the seeds are inside of it. Now, I could just pop this open and let the seeds go willy-nilly, but I kind of want to do this with purpose. So you peel it apart, and inside are the seeds. They are fully dried and ready to be planted. Easy as that. So, I'm going to put those guys in my pocket. So, it's been 95 degrees or so the last two or three days. It's supposed to be pretty hot today. It is. So not only do I have stuff to do in the garden, but I need to finish cleaning a pool. So I have not shown our pool. It is an in-ground pool. I think 12 feet deep, something like that. I have not shown our pool because it does not look good. So we got the pump up and going. Pull a bunch of chemicals, which were way expensive. The price is on everything going up. So I'll be working on that and hopefully in the next two weeks I will be able to show you guys what our pool looks like. I'm also working on painting the wall. I started painting it seriously last year, but it has been put on the back burner. I never finished it, so I need to get to finishing that. So let's wrap up this video. Diatomaceous earth for pest control. This is organic gardening and I am really hoping that this is going to be very effective on the beetles. That is like my main thing. I have a beetle infestation and I need to get rid of them. Remember, when using diatomaceous earth, it will kill your ladybugs and bees. Avoid your flowers. Even on your flowering plants, or just your flowers. Avoid the flowers if you can. Some of the, you know, on the amaranth I couldn't. So that is all that I have for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comment section. Please hit the thumbs up on this video if you liked it. In the description below will be a link to our Linktree account. It has all of our social media's website, all of that good stuff. And don't forget to subscribe to Hollow Acres Homestead. We'll see you next time.